Billy said to himself. Luckily, I remembered all that my father said to me. Now that craving for pleasure has ceased in me, I shall attain to the state of tranquillity, which is like nectar. I am really and truly tired of repeatedly earning wealth, fulfilling my desires and enjoying sexual pleasures. Delightful is the state of peace. In utter inner tranquillity, all pleasures and pains cease to be of value. Bully is a demon. Demons like the gods live for an awful long time. They probably experience it even more than we do, the, the grind of the, of the daily round. And Bully's found himself a way out. Life is one continuous round of repetitive experiences. Nothing new is ever experienced. I shall give up everything, and with my mind completely withdrawn from the pursuit of pleasure, I shall remain happily established in the self. This universe is but the creation of the mind, what is lost by abandoning it. The pursuit of pleasure is what keeps us on the treadmill. It's not even the pursuit of pleasure, it's the pursuit of the idea of pleasure. Because when do we ever get the goods? But you've got this idea that we want these things. And even if we get them, we might get a bit of pleasure. And then it's on the treadmill again, looking for the next carrot that will keep us going. You know, we're like the donkey with the carrot on a stick stuck in front of it. And the donkey's turning some wheel around. And occasionally the donkey the carrot bangs in the donkey's head and it gets a little nibble and that just keeps it going, keeps it going all the time. We're like donkeys chasing our carrot and uh, we get a little nibble now and again and that's keeps us pursuing the, the pleasure. And it's all a creation of the mind anyway. This is, this is the, the, double, the double whammy. It's not as if there's anything out there that we can actually have, that we can actually get. Enough even of this repentance, for the important thing in a cure is the immediate treatment of the illness. Who am I? What is all this? I shall submit these questions to my Guru Shukra. Who am I? That's inquiry into the nature of your identity. And what is all this? Inquiry into the nature of the world appearance. And he's going to his Guru Sukra, who we met not that long ago. We had the story of Sukra, the son of Brigu. And Sukra has now taken up his role as the preceptor of the demons, or the titans, or the asuras, as they're properly known. The sister continued. Having thus resolved, Bali contemplated the guru of the demons, Shukra. On account of the infinite consciousness he was established in, Shukra was omnipresent and knew that his disciple needed his presence. Instantly he materialized his body in front of the king, Bali. Realizing omnipresence does not give you this ability. We have to bear in mind there's two things here. One is Bali visualized Sukra. So in some in, in one way Sukra is actually Bali's creation. But we did hear the story of, of Sukra. And being established in omnipresence doesn't allow yourself to materialize your body anywhere. These are the lovely stories that the language lets us run with. These are the stories of the spiritual romance, which are great, and we can enjoy them and have fun with them. But we remind ourselves that they're stories. In the immediate presence of the Guru, Bali shone with a special radiance. He received the Guru with due honours and worshipped the Guru's feet with great devotion. Then Bali asked Sukra, Lord, it is the reflection of your own divine radiance that prompts me to place this problem before you. I have no desire for pleasure, and I wish to learn the truth. 
Who am I? Who are you? What is this world? Please tell me all this. Sukra replied, I am on my way to another realm, O Bali, but I shall give you in a few words the very quintessence of wisdom. Consciousness alone exists. Consciousness alone is all this. All this is filled with consciousness. I, you, and all this world are but consciousness. If you are not humble and sincere, you will gain everything from what I have said. If not, an attempt at further explanation will be like pouring oblations into a heap of ashes. That is useless. The oblations are meaningful only when poured into the sacred fire. The objectivity, conceptualization of consciousness is known as bondage and the abandonment of such objectivity is liberation. Consciousness minus such objectivity is the reality of everything. This is the conviction of all philosophies. When you are established in this vision, you will also attain the infinite consciousness. I shall now depart to do the work of the gods, for as long as this body lasts, one shall not abandon appropriate action. So everything's consciousness, ob objectification or conceptualization is bondage, and the, the abandonment of such conceptualization is liberation. Some people think it's about giving up thinking, that you've got to stop thoughts. It's not that, it's much more profound than that. It's giving up notions and identification with notions. It's not about getting the mind to stop thinking. That's a complete dead end. You can do that and you can, you can practice that if you want and get some benefit from it. But it's nothing to do with realization. Realization is understanding the notions and beliefs which we live by, which we assume. Notions of having a body, a world out there, of notions about perception, that there's a me here perceiving things out there. These are actually beliefs and notions. They don't actually stand up to very deep scrutiny. And uh, I've covered these points before. You can explore it in detail. How does perception work? It doesn't hang, the story of perception doesn't hang together. Neither does the story of a world out there. Neither does the story of me being a body. These things just don't hang together when you look into them, either on a personal level, philosophical level, or a, or a scientific level. And Bali is asked to be humble and sincere. And this is what I said before. You need to be open. This is what was mentioned, was described as goodness in the previous chapter. Chapter 24. Being humble and sincere. It means being humble is meaning that you're, you don't have any notions to defend. What, what's your reaction? What's your reaction, for example, if I say... The body is a notion. It's an idea. It doesn't have any real existence. You think, oh, well, that's quite clever, you know, um, and you might want to go along with it, but you don't really take it on board because basically you know the body is real and that the world out there is real. Basically, you know this, don't you? This is your conviction. And you might think that you'll temporarily suspend that and explore the possibility that, it, that it's, it's not. But you're not temporarily suspending it. It takes, this is, it takes tremendous humility and sincerity to, to, to put that aside. And it's quite a strange thing that Bali's been asked to do this because uh, we'll, hear, we'll hear how he interacted with Vishnu in one of Vishnu's avatars. And the tradition is that Bali got quite arrogant, although that's not how he's portrayed in the Yoga Vasishta.